Hey everyone, we will do review and also exercise for exam four today. Exam four will be over chapter 20 and 21. Instruction for best uh, for the best result of this exercise, please study chapters twenty and twenty one before taking this uh, taking this exercise. Prepare some pieces of papers and pens or pencil to write your answer. There will be two or three seconds after each question to write your answer on paper before the answer key is given and explained. You can always pause the video if you need more time. After finish the exercise, check your answers, how many are correct and how many are incorrect. Repeat the process until you get 100% correct answer. Make sure that the 100 correct answers are based on your knowledge, not from your guessing. It is very likely that you will get a very good score on your exam four if you follow this exercise correctly. Okay, we start with number one. Which of the following is not functions of the kidney? Okay, choose your answer. Let's say urinary system. Okay, the main organ is called the kidney. And kidney function is to filter the blood to remove the metabolic waste so this one is the function of the kidney uh, it's also remove the excess chemicals like ions maybe sodium potassium or whatever we have more in the blood will be removed through the kidney synthesis is plasma protein it is not the function of kidney this is mostly functions of uh, liver okay so it is made in liver, okay? So plasma protein made in liver. So this should be the answer for this question, not, okay? Not function of the kidney. Maintaining volume, pH, composition of body fluid with a normal range, it is also part of kidney function. Okay, next one. Which of the following is the correct sequence of urinary tract organs from the top to the bottom? Choose your answer. Okay, it starts with kidney because kidney is the organ that filter the blood. So start with kidney. Okay, and then from the kidney, the filtrate, which is the urine, will be carried into the ureter. There are two ureters, two kidney and two ureters. And the ureter will carry the urine into the storage, which is called the urinary bladder. And then from the storage, from the urinary bladder, the urines will be removed from our body through a short channel is called the urethra. Okay, so kidney, ureter, bladder, and urethra. That's the sequence. Start with the kidney. Okay, start with kidney. This one, kidney. Yeah, that's the only one that's at the kidney. So kidney, ureter, urinary bladder, and urethra. This should be the answer. Okay, next one. When you perform kidney dissections, the toughest outer layer that you remove is the A, B, C, or D. Okay, choose your answer. Okay, look at this picture over here. The layer that protects the kidney so this layer over here, you can remove it actually when you dissect the uh, kidney. This one is called the capsule, right? Because this is the capsule of kidney. Therefore, it's called the renal. Renal means kidney, okay? Renal capsule. 
So look for that answer, renal capsule. So this should be the answer. Okay, what are the three main internal areas of the kidney from the outermost to the innermost area? Choose your answer. Okay, look at this picture. So if you dissect the kidney, you should be able to see three main areas. The outer part, which is here, is called the cortex. Okay, so this area is called the cortex. The second layer is this one. Okay, and this second layer is called medulla. In the medulla, you see this pyramid structure. It's called the renal pyramid, okay? So medulla is the second layer. The third layer, the one that looks like a panel, is called the pelvis, okay? So start with cortex, medulla, and then pelvis. And then from the pelvis, the urines will go to this channel. It's called the ureter so this one is the ureter so look for that sequence start with cortex look for the cortex so this one cortex this one cortex and another cortex is medulla so this should be the answer okay so cortex medulla and the pelvis next one the funnel shaped sac that connected directly to the ureter is the, we already mentioned that, so this is ureter. Okay, so this, the last part right, of the kidney over here, that's the, uh, the question, okay? That's the question about asking you this funnel shape sac. Right? So this one is the renal. Pelvis. Okay, the next one. Which of the following is the functions, functional units of the kidney or urinary system that filters the blood to produce urine? Choose your answer. Okay, so the unit of kidney, okay, this is actually the unit that really filter the blood okay, inside the kidney is called nephron. So the whole things over here, okay, so this structure, gonna circle the structure over here, okay, is called the nephron. So this is the nephron. If you see the nephron, it has two main area. Okay, the first one is here. Okay, so that area is called the renal corpuscle. Okay, and that renal corpuscle consists of two part. The first part is here in the middle. And the second part is here, look like a cap, okay, capsule. So that two part, the first one is called the glomerulus, okay? and the second part is called the glomerular capsule. Okay, that's the main, the first part of the nephron. The second part is called the renal tubule, okay, renal tubule, which is starting from this, okay, you see the tube, okay, and then going down, going up again, and then finally enter into this uh, collecting duct, okay, this is collecting duct, okay. So this is the second part of the nephron, eh, which is tubule. Eh? If you see the tubule actually has three parts or four parts. This is the first part, 
Okay, the first part is called the proximal tubule, or sometimes it's called the PCT, okay, proximal convoluted tubule. The second part is actually making a loop. Okay? The first loop is going down. We can call that is a descending loop. And then the next loop is going up. It's called the ascending loop. Okay. And then the last part is from the ascending loop into the collecting duct. Okay. So this part over here, that part is in the distal, okay, away from the capsule. That part is called the distal convoluting tubule or DCT, okay? So this is the nephron, okay? This is the nephron part. So the unit that really filter the blood inside the kidney is called the nephron. Now, each kidney, okay, how many nephrons are contained in each kidney? It choose your answer. Okay, if you look at this kidney, Okay, and then make it bigger over here. There are so many nephron. See, this one is nephron, 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 nephron. Okay, starting from this renal corpuscle and then the tube, proximal, descending loop, ascending loop. Okay, and then finally, oh, okay, descending loop, ascending loop, and this is the D distal area. So distal, this is proximal. Okay. So if you count it, okay, there are actually one million each kidney. So if total, if you have two kidney, it's going to be two millions nephrons. Okay. What are the two main parts of a nephron? Already mentioned that. What is the two part? So over here, this is the first part. It's called the renal corpuscle. And the second part is from here until here. Okay. So this second part is called the renal tubule. Okay. So again, the renal corpuscle consists of glomerulus and renal capsule. The renal tubule consists of proximal, okay, and then descending loop. This is ascending loop and distal. Okay? That's the part of the tubule. This one is called the collecting duct because this duct will collect from many nephrons. So there are many nephrons that actually uh, going to the same collecting duct. Okay, so the answer will be renal corpuscle and the renal tubule. Renal corpuscle is a blank whereas the renal tubule is a blank, okay? So from the structure, you have to see the structure, how it looks like. Choose your answer, A, B, C, or D. Okay, look at the structure, the storage. This is not, okay? So renal calcifacer is not a storage. Okay, that's already wrong over there. Uh, renal corpuscle is a special blood cell. It is not a cell. Huh? So it is not a cell. Huh? It's not a blood cell. Okay. Because blood cell is on the three types red blood cell, white blood cell, and blood cell. So this is not correct. This is glandular. This is not gland. Okay. <laughs> so gland is something that produces uh, things like hormone and enzyme. This is not. So the renal corpuscle is not a gland. So it is already wrong over there. So this will be the correct answer. Okay. The renal 
corpuscle consists of blood capillaries, and this blood capillary is called glomerulus. Okay, and the second part is called the glomerular capsule. Okay, so there are two parts of this renal corpuscle, the glomerulus and glomerular capsule. And the renal tubule is a what? It's a highly coiled tubule. Exciting uh, exit from this capsule. Okay, so that should be the answer. Renal corpuscle consists of, okay, we already mentioned that. The first part is here in the middle, it's called the glomerulus. Looking for that one, so glomerulus. And the second part is look like a cup over here. Okay. And this one is called the capsule. So it consists of glomerulus and glomerular capsule. That should be the answer. Which of the following is the correct sequence of the three main process of urine formation? Okay. So which one, A, B, C, or D? Of course, okay, if you see the structure over here in the renal corpuscle, there will be filtration because blood enter to this glomerulus and then blood will be filtered. The urine will go to the capsule. Okay? And then from the capsule, the urine will go to the tube and finally will go to the collecting duct it, from the collecting duct, it will go to renal pelvis, ureter, bladder, and then finally urethra. So the first process will be filtration. Look for that one. Start with the filtration. That's the only one. Okay, filtration. Right here. Okay, and then after filtration, what is the second process? It's called the tubular reabsorption. So just for information, the filtration over here in the renal corpuscle is just based on the size. So if I make it bigger over here, let's say this is blood that enter into the glomerulus. Okay, so this is glomerulus. Okay, so this blood carry a lot of things, okay, like uh, glucose, amino acid, ions, including the waste product like urea, ammonia, okay, it will be here. Okay, and then the second structure is the capsule. Okay, the capsule has hole over here or pore. Okay, so this pore will filter the blood. So the blood will be forced into this capsule. And because the pore is only based on the size, most of the smaller molecules will enter into this capsule. Okay? That one is called the filtrate. And this filtrate later become urine. Okay, so in the filtrate, because this is small uh, molecules only, so small molecule will be here. Like for example, glucose will be here. Uh, amino acid will be here, ions will be here. Now, how about red blood cell, white blood cell, proteins will stay, stay here, okay? Red blood cell, white blood cell, protein will stay in the blood, okay? The small molecules, glucose, amino acid will become the filtrate, will enter into this capsule, okay? So as you know, that this glucose is, is really important for us. It has to stay in the blood. Therefore, if you see this blood vessel over here, will follow. Right? Will follow the tube. The tube going there, right? it follow it. Okay. So this glucose that present in the tubule will be reabsorbed back into the blood vessel, okay? And the main reabsorption for the glucose will be happening in the first 
area of the tubule, which is the proximal. Okay, the proximal. So this is the reabsorption. And again, just remember because the filtration is based on size, there will be ammonia, urea still present in the blood. Okay, some of them still present in the blood. Therefore, this ammonia urea has to be secreted back into the tubule. Okay, so that's the third process going to be. It's called the tubular secretion, which is secretion of waste product back into the tubule. So this is secretion of urea, ammonia, uric acid. Eh? Uh, uh, creatine, phosphate, these are the waste product. The one that will be reabsorbed back like glucose, uh, including water, uh, amino acids, it will be reabsorbed back. So these are the three main process. Start with the glomerular filtration happening in this renal corpuscle. And the second process will be happening in the tubule. Therefore, the name is tubular, okay? tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion. So that should be the answer, filtration, reabsorption, and secretion. Okay, once in the glomerular capsule, the filtrate then move into the what? A, B, C, or D. Okay, just remember the structure. This one is the filtration area, the renal capsule. Okay, the filtrate will go to this capsule. And from here, we'll go here, of course. Okay, we'll go, the filtrate will go to this tubule. Start with the proximal. Okay, proximal and then descending loop, ascending loop, and then distal. Okay, so it's go to the tubule. That should be the answer to the renal tubule. What is the correct sequence of renal tubules? Okay, we already mentioned that the correct sequence will start from here. Is the proximal. Okay, and then here, which is the descending loop. Okay. And then here, okay, it is ascending loop, okay? And then the final one is gonna be distal tubule. And then from the distal tubule, we'll go to this collecting duct, okay? But collecting duct is not part of the nephron. So nephron start from this, renal corpuscle until the distal tubule over here. So look for the sequence of the tubule, start with proximal tubule. Proximal, oh, here proximal, this one is proximal. What's the next one? Descending loop, look for distal, so this is wrong. Okay. Distal is the last one over here. Okay. So it's gonna be descending, and then ascending, and then finally this one. So this one should be the correct answer. Reabsorption of glucose occurs primarily through the wall of A, B, C, or D. Okay, I already mentioned before the reabsorption mainly will be happening on the first tubule, which is the proximal. Okay, so this one is the proximal tubule. Okay? This is descending loop, ascending loop, and this is the distal. Okay, glucose, amino acid, most of the important molecules that we still need in the blood okay, will be reabsorbed back from the proximal tubule going back to the blood. So this has become part of the blood. Okay, so start uh, is from the proximal tubule. So that should be the answer. 
The hormone ADH produced by hypothalamus promotes water reabsorption through the wall of blank A, B, C, or D. Okay, look at this. Water reabsorption mainly okay, happening in this last area. Okay, which is, this is actually not part of the nephron. It's called the collecting duct. So water will be reabsorbed back over here. So a lot of water will be reabsorbed back into our blood. So therefore, we are become hydrated. Okay, we have water in our blood. If it is not reabsorbed, then what happened with our body? We become dehydrated. Okay, so just for information, water reabsorption in this collecting duct. Okay, it is stimulated by the hormones called the ADH. Okay, so this hormone ADH will stimulate water reabsorption from the collecting duct. Okay. In which region is the water actively transported across the membrane? We already mentioned that. A, B, C, or D. Again, mainly water will be reabsorbed back from the collecting duct. Water channel created on the cell membrane of collecting duct cell that respond to the ADH are called A, B, C, or D. This should be easy from the name. It's actually telling you water. Aqua, right? Channel is porin or pores. Okay. Therefore, the proteins, okay, it is actually proteins that making this water channel is called the aqua porin. So, IN usually refer to the protein or channel. So, there should be the answer. Which of the following substances are byproduct of metabolic process in our body that should be excreted via urine? So which one is actually the molecules that is toxic in our blood that has to be filtered and then removed from our body through this urinary system, okay? through the urine? Which one? Glucose is not, we need glucose. Amino acid is not, so we need amino acid. It, we will not remove the amino acid. Red blood cell, of course not, okay? It has to stay in our blood. How about urea? Yes, urea, uric acid, ammonia, and creatins are the waste product, the byproduct that has to be removed from our blood. Otherwise, it is become toxic in our blood. So that should be the answer. Which of the following is a normal constituent of urine? We already mentioned that. Okay, glucose is not in urine. If you have glucose in urine, you have problem. Maybe you have diabetes. Okay? Protein, it is not. If you have proteins in the urine, it means that you have problem with your body. The same thing with blood. Maybe you have infection if you have blood in your urine. So the normal constituent or the normal molecules in the urine will be the creatine. Okay? We can also put urea, okay, uric acid, and uh, creatine. If we have excess ions, Okay, will be also in urine. Okay, so these are the normal consistent of urine. So the answer should be D, creatine. Which of the following is a byproduct of amino acid metabolism in the liver? So this is the byproduct, it has to be removed from our body. Okay. So this byproduct is actually product of amino acid metabolism. Which one is that? This is actually the main constituent of urine. And the urine name is coming from here, which is the urea. 
urea, urine. See that one? Eh? So this is the byproduct of amino acid metabolism. Which of the following is a byproduct of nucleic acid metabolism? So this is another byproduct that present in the urine. We already mentioned that urea, uric acid, creatine, and ammonia. So which one is the byproduct of nucleic acid metabolism? The urea, it is not. We already mentioned this. This is from amino acid. Okay, this is amino acid byproduct. Uric acid, yes. So this one is the answer. Okay, so uric acid is the byproduct of nucleic acid metabolism. What is renal clearance? What is renal clearance? A, B, C, or D. Okay, so renal clearance is the rate of a uh, substance that are removed from the blood. Okay, so that's the definition of renal clearance, the rate at which substances are removed from the blood. Of course, the substance is mainly urea, uric acid, okay, ammonia, and the creatine. Yes, this should be the answer. Substances like caffeine, okay, so caffeine is an example of diuretics. Now, what is the meaning of diuretics? Okay, what is the meaning of diuretics? A, B, C, or D. Okay, so usually if you drink caffeine, you will increase the urination. So increase the frequency of urinations. So what is urination? Urine, which is the volume. So increase the volume of urine excreted. That's diuretic mean. The opposite of diuretic is anti-diuretic. Okay. So this one will cause our urine volume to be decreased. Okay, so the answer for this question will be diuretics is the substance that increase the volume of urine. 24, when you exercise and do not take enough water, right, you become dehydrated. This means that our body losing a lot of water. Uh, because we use it for sweating, you know, during exercise. Which of the following will you notice when you urinate? If your body dehydrates, it means your body needs water. Uh, therefore, you have to conserve, conserve water. Now, how to conserve water? What you notice in your urine? So when you conserve water, then your urine will be less, a small amount. So small amounts of urine. How it look like? It's gonna be a little bit darker because what? Because this urine will be concentrated. Less water, but more substances over there. So this is what happened if we are dehydrated, we will produce less urine with more concentration of substances. The tube that conveys urine from kidney, okay, from kidney, uh, this tube over here, okay. So to urinary bladder, so you have urinary bladder of here, so this would be two kidney and two of this tube. So what is the name of this tube? Okay. Again, you should memorize the organs of this urine system. Start from kidney and then ureter, okay, to ureter and then bladder. And short channel is called the urethra. Okay, so the question is this one. So the answer should be the ureter from kidney to bladder. The tube that convey urine to outside the body is called, so that's gonna be the last tube. Okay, kidney, ureter, 
bladder, and this should be this one. So what do you call this tube? The last tube is called the urethra. Why are female at higher risk of contracting a UTI, urinary tract infection? A, B, C, or D. The difference between male and female, okay, it is in the urethra. Okay, you can see it, okay? So male will have longer urethra. Okay? Female will have shorter urethra. Okay? Female, this is male. So why male have higher risk? Because it has shorter urethra. So usually the infection is coming from outside, okay? From here, especially in this female, it is coming from uh, vagina. So it's going here, uh, you know, going, uh, I mean, from the uh, external genitalia, uh, close to the urethra. So the bacteria will be entered into the bladder and sometimes will also go up into the ureter and finally go to the kidney. So female have a higher risk because shorter ureter. Uh, not ureter, not ureter. Why female has higher risk? The female said, okay, so one of them should be urethra. Let's see. So this is a mistake. In the, so it's actually B over here. Uh, it should be urethra. So it's A and B is the same. So actually, I put uh, B with urethra. I forget to change urethra into the urethra. So that's just be the answer. The female urethra is shorter than Which of the following vitamin is produced by kidney to stimulate calcium reabsorption in the small intestine? A, B, C, or D. Okay, remember calcium, right? This is for our bone. And the calcium reabsorption increased by vitamin D. Okay, that's the reason why if you drink milk, usually that milk have vitamin D because what? Vitamin D increase the reabsorption of calcium from the small intestine. So we also produce vitamin D, which is our kidney, produce this vitamin D. And this vitamin D will go to the small intestine to stimulate the reabsorption of calcium. So the answer should be vitamin D. So kidney produce vitamin D. And this production is actually stimulated by UV light, okay, by light. Which of the following hormones is produced by kidney to stimulate red blood cell formation in the red bone marrow? A, B, C, or D. Kidney also produce hormone. And this hormone will go to our bone, okay, to red bone marrow. And red bone marrow will increase production of one of the blood, okay? Remember, red bone marrow produces all the blood type. Okay? Red blood cell, white blood cell, and the platelets, okay? Okay, one of them, one of these blood cells stimulated by hormone produced by this kidney. And this is the red blood cell. Okay, so what is the name of the hormone? Remember the name of the red blood cell, another name is called the erythrocyte. Okay, that's the red blood cell. So the name of the hormone will be related to this name. It's going to be erythrocyte. Or eighteen or EPO. Okay, so this hormone is called the EPO, erythropoietin, produced by kidney to stimulate red blood cell production in the red bone marrow. Which
which of the following chemicals might at least abuse because its potential to increase performance by increasing red blood cell formation? We already mentioned that. Which one do you think will be abused by athletes? Insulin is not. Insulin is for removing glucose. Of course, these hormones can be abused by athletes because this hormone increase red blood cell formation. When the red blood cell increase, the performance also increase because red blood cell carry oxygen. Right? Mr. Krebs has condition called gout. Gout, the inflammation and pain is in his joint due to deposit excess of one in his grade two joint. Usually the joint that has gout is the lower part of our body, okay, which is here around here, okay, and joints in our foot. So what excess actually present here? It's going to be crystal. Eh? It's a crystal of uric acid. Eh? Because it is crystal, it will be going down based on the gravity. Therefore, mostly will be deposited in the lower part of our body, eh? in the food. So that excess, that substance is for the uric acid and usually in the form of crystal. Okay, so crystal uric acid. Mr. Krebs liked to eat seafood. One morning, he woke up with a severe pain in his joint of his big toe. This condition is called what? We already mentioned that. Okay, so seafood, they have a lot of nucleic acid. Okay, this is animal uh, or cell. Okay. And the nucleic acid metabolism is a uric acid. And this uric acid can be crystal and deposited into the lower part of our body. Okay? So that condition is called the gold. Okay? The depositions of crystal uric acid in our joint is painful, really, really painful. Many older males okay, begin to unable to control their urination effectively. Leakage of urine is starting to become common. What is the primary cause of this urinary incontinence? A, A B, C, or D. Enlargement of kidney, prostate, vitamin C. Look at here. Okay, it is kidney. Uh, ureter, and this is bladder and urethra. Behind the bladder, male has a gland, it's called a prostate gland. Okay, so when the prostate gland enlarges, it's causing the bladder uh, to push the bladder and causing the bladder to think, oh, uh, I already have enough urine over here so i have to go to the bathroom for example okay so this is mainly caused by the enlargement of prostate sometimes it is called the bph okay benign, benign prostate hyperplasia which is the enlargement of prostate so that's the usually the main cause for the male to have urinary incontinence. What does hemodialysis involve? A, B, C, or D. So hemodialysis, this is the dialysis of filtration of blood, which is done by kidney, okay? So if someone unable, their kidney is unable to perform this uh, natural filtration, then they might have this hemodialysis, which is using what? Artificial kidney. Which of the following is a transcellular fluid? Cytoplasm, cytosol, blood plasma, or cerebrospinal fluid? 
Okay, look at this picture. We have cell. Okay, we have another cell over here. Okay, we have another cell over here. Okay, so inside the cell is called cytoplasm. Okay, and in the cytoplasm mainly consists of water. This water is called the cytosol, or sometimes it's called the ICF. Okay, intra cellular fluid, okay, fluid that's located inside the cell, okay. Outside the cell, we have also fluid, it's called the ECF, extracellular fluid, okay. Example of extracellular fluid in the blood vessel is called plasma, that's example of extracellular fluid. Okay, so cytoplasm uh, is not transcellular fluid. Okay? Cytosol, it is not. This is ICF, okay, intracellular fluid. Blood plasma, this is also not. This is ECF, extracellular fluid. Okay? Sometimes this also called the in, inter. Sorry interstitial fluid okay so the only correct answer will be the cerebrospinal fluid or csf this is the transcellular fluid in terms of electrolytes which of the following statement is true when comparing ecf and icf Okay, so ECF, let's say this is cell, this is another cell, okay. The fluid inside the cell is called the ICF, intracellular fluid or cytosol, right? The fluid outside the cell is called the ECF, extracellular fluid, okay. So this is the true about the ECF and ICF. Inside our cell, we have a lot of potassium so potassium inside the cell abundant outside the cell in the ecf we have a lot of sodium 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 also chloride 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 okay uh, calcium a lot outside but inside mostly potassium potassium okay uh, outside, sodium, chloride, calcium, it will be on the ECF. Okay, now look at the choice. ECF has higher sodium, ECF, yes, ECF has higher sodium and potassium. No, right? because potassium is going to be lower in the ECF. So this one wrong. If you have higher sodium, that's correct, and lower potassium, that's correct. Okay, if you have lower sodium, incorrect, and lower sodium, incorrect. So this one should be the answer. Okay, extracellular fluid has more sodium and lower of potassium. Higher concentration of blank are found in the ICF, I remember ICF is inside the cell, ECF outside the cell. So ECF has a lot of sodium, sodium, chloride, you know, sodium, chloride, calcium, it's outside. In the ICF, there are a lot of potassium, potassium, including phosphate ion over here. Okay. So ICF. So look at the answer. Higher concentrations in the ICF will be look for potassium and phosphate. Chloride is not. Potassium is yes, but it's not because of chloride. Sodium, no. Sodium is going to be in the ECF, okay? extracellular fluid. Potassium, yes. Sodium is not. Okay. So which one? Potassium and phosphate. So this should be the correct answer. 
In average, the body of an adult male is about blank water by weight. Okay, what do you think? Remember, our cell consists about 70% of water. So remember, our body consists of many cells, cell, mostly medium of cell. That's also mean that our body consists of this kind of amount of water, around 70%. 65 to 70% of water. Which of the following would have less water? A, B, C, or D. Okay, what do you think? Of course, blood will have a lot of water because it has plasma for that. The brain also really liquid, a lot of water in the brain. The same thing with the muscle tissue, okay? Uh, there are some water over there, and it is more than in the adipose. Remember, adipose is fat, okay? Fat and water, they, they are not friends, okay? So fat and water, they are opposite, okay? They will not mix together. So in the fat, there will be less water, even there will be no water. So in the fat tissue, there will be less water. body of an adult female will have blank compared to an adult male a b c or d okay which one do you think so female mostly will have less water but more fat tissue compared to the male okay so female has less water but more fat or adipose tissue compared to the male. Which part of brain control blood osmolarity? Okay. So blood osmolarity, remember this part of brain produce the ADH. Okay. The ADH will increase or stimulate the water reabsorption in the connecting duct. So it's controlling this. Okay, blood, water, okay, blood osmolarity, including water concentration and also uh, ions, uh, substance concentrations in the blood. So it's going to be the hypothalamus. Okay. Cerebrum is for our action. Cerebrum, this is for uh, skill movement. Okay. Thalamus, this is a relay station for sensation. This is for sensation. Okay. This is for skill movement. Okay. This is for actions and sensations. Okay. So hypothalamus will be the answer. SpongeBob has never felt thirsty. The doctor diagnosis that SpongeBob has abnormality in wet. Of course. Which part that control the water osmolarity, water reabsorption? This will be the hypothalamus. Okay. You see the brain, let's say this is the cerebrum. Okay. This is cerebrum. Behind that cerebrum, you have cerebellum. Okay. And then after that, there will be brain stem okay the middle part over here is called the diencephalon okay. and that diencephalon consists of three parts okay thalamus hypothalamus and epithalamus okay the all part of the diencephalon so this is the one that control our water balance, the hypothalamus. On average, how much water intake needed by an individual to drink normally? Okay, so normally, how much water we need from drink? 500 milliliter, 1500, 2500, or 3500. So we need about 
1.5 liter okay uh, per day okay is about maybe eight cup of water per day so 1.5 liter is equal 1500 milliliter okay so this should be the answer this is the one that we need intake per day about 1500 milliliter or 1.5 liter per day. How does ADH in the blood influence water output? Okay. So is your answer. So ADH produced by hypothalamus. Okay. Then go to the bloodstream. Then it reads to this duct, the duct that collect the urine from the nephron. And this duct is called the collecting duct. In the collecting duct, the ADH will increase the water reabsorption to the blood. Okay, water reabsorption to the blood. So look for that one. So mainly in the collecting duct by altering the water reabsorption in the collecting duct. So this one over collecting duct, and there is also some coming from the distal tubule. So this one will be the answer. So ADH, increase water reabsorption in collecting duct. It is not increased filtration, okay? It's not reabsorption. It is not reabsorption of glucose. It is water. A water reabsorption in the collecting duct. By what road would a person in a normal condition lose the greatest amount of water? Okay, what do you think? Is it easy? Of course, we mostly lose water through our urine. So about 1.2 until 2 liter per day will be uh, removed from urine. So urine volume, okay, or product is about this, 1.2 to 2 liter per day urine produced from our body. This is the main uh, loss of water from our body through the urine. What is the accent of the hormone ADH? We already mentioned that. So over and over, ADH produced by the hypothalamus will go to the collecting duct. Look for the collecting duct first. Uh, increase what? Water reabsorption. Look for water and collecting duct. Increase water reabsorption in collecting duct. That should be the answer. There are some also uh, reabsorbed from the distal tubule, but mainly collecting duct okay, water. Okay, look for water and collecting duct. That's the ADH. Why does drinking alcohol increase the volume of urine produce causing dehydration? Okay, so why alcohol causing us to be urinate more? So if you drink alcohol, usually you will do more urination. So this alcohol is increase urination. When our body increase urination, what happen? Our body become dehydrated. Okay, and this is dangerous. Sometimes it become black out, especially female. Female has uh, more sensitive uh, uh, through the alcohol drinking, so they get, they might get blackout easily because of alcohol. Okay, so dehydration and then blackout. This is sometimes is called the hangover syndrome. Okay, because of this alcohol. So what is the the, the reason why alcohol increase our urine? Remember the hormone is called the ADH. 
ID it mean antidiuretic hormone. Uh, remember the antidiuretic mean is causing your urine to be less, okay, less urine, less urination. Okay, so if you produce ADH, you will uh, urinate normally, okay, which is less, okay, around 1.2 to 2 liter per day. If you drink alcohol, what happened? Alcohol will inhibit ADH production. So when the ADH production inhibit, what happened? You will increase urination. You will urinate more, okay? And then it's causing the dehydration. So alcohol causing inhibit of ADH release. That's the main reasons alcohol causing us to produce more urine and causing the dehydration, sometimes blackout. What is the action of the hormone aldosterone? So <laughs> aldosterone is the hormone that A, B, C, or D. <laughs> so aldosterone is related to sodium. Okay? So sodium reabsorption. So it's actually aldosterone function is to conserve sodium in the blood, in the blood. Therefore, this is related to sodium reabsorption from kidney tubules. In response to the action of blank, sodium ions conserved in the blood. I just mentioned that one. Okay. So, which hormone that conserves sodium ion? Yes. This is the aldosterone. Which of the following would be most helpful in treating hypocalcemia? Okay, A, B, C, or D. What is hypo mean? Hypo mean low. Calcemia mean calcium. Okay, it means that our blood low calcium. It is dangerous sometimes causing our bone become uh, fragile. We need more calcium in this case, in this condition. So what we can do, A, B, C, or D. Okay, look for the calcium, calcium, or calcium. Right? But what, which one is increased calcium in our blood? Of course, ingesting calcium salt and high doses of vitamin D because vitamin D increases the reabsorption of calcium in our intestine, okay? Avoiding calcium should be wrong. Right? We need calcium. We need to eat calcium. Avoiding milk is also wrong because milk has a lot of calcium. Uh, removing parathyroid gland, it is also wrong because parathyroid gland produce uh, hormone is called a PTH. Okay? Parathyroid hormone in this PTH actually increase calcium in the blood. Okay, so we need this PTH in this condition, in this hypocalcemia. Okay, so this is incorrect, incorrect, incorrect. The correct one should be A. In the bicarbonate buffer system, okay, blank act as a weak acid. So bicarbonate buffer system, we have it in our blood, it consists of these two molecules or substances, which is oh, sorry, bicarbonate ions and bicarbonate acid. Okay, so the name is telling you this is actually acid. This is actually weak acid. So what is the opposite of acid? It's base. So this ion is actually weak base or alkaline. Okay, so buffer system consists of these two molecules, weak base and weak acid. Okay, so which one is the weak acid? It's gonna be hydrochloric, uh, I mean hydro, uh, bicarbonate acid, okay? 
uh, the carbonic, uh, carbonic acid over here. It is the weak acid. Okay. In the bicarbonate buffer system, blank uh, act as a weak base. We already mentioned that this one, the bicarbonate uh, ions will be the weak base. Okay, now how do the buffer system minimize pH changes? How? A, B, C, or D. Okay, let's say we take a lot of uh, food or drink that has a lot of acid. So what does acid mean? It has a lot of hydrogen ion. So our drink have a lot of hydrogen ion. And it is very dangerous because our blood is become acidic. It's called the acidosis. Okay? It's really dangerous. So we have buffer system. Remember, we have two molecules. Okay? The weak base and the weak acid. Okay. Now, if we drink a lot of acid, which one do you think is going to be used for neutralize this acid? Remember, the one that neutral the acid will be base. The one that neutralizes base will be the acid. Okay, so in this case, because we have acid, the one that will neutralize the acid will be this, uh, the bicarbonate ion. So that's the one that will take the extra strong acid of here with the bicarbonate ion, it is converted into this, which is weak acid. It's over here is strong acid. Okay, so the way we remove the strong acid okay, is by converting that strong acid into weak acid using the weak base over here, okay? So converting weak acid into strong acid, that's wrong, right? It has to be from strong acid into weak acid. So this one will be the answer. Which of the following pH is a normal pH level of the blood? So it's which one is normal? Okay, normal pH is really, really uh, fixed. Uh, it's very small limit, which is from 7.35 to 7.45 pH, okay? It is close to neutral pH. Remember pH neutral uh, is 7.0. It is close to neutral, a little bit uh, alkaline. Okay, so between 7.35 to 7.45, that's the normal blood pH level. Which of the following pH is indication of acidosis? Acidosis means more hydrogen ion. More hydrogen ion is actually, uh, with indication by lower, uh, lower pH. So this is the pH scale, okay, from one to 14, and then seven over here is neutral. Okay, and lower than seven is called acidic. Higher than seven is called basic okay so which of the following indicate acidosis mean that more acid so which one it's gonna be lower than normal ph which is the the lowest one is 7.35 then lower than 7.5 is considered as the acidosis now how about alkalinosis Alkalinosis mean more alkaline, more base. So this is seven, this is 14, 
this is one, this is basic, lower than seven is acidic. Uh, remember the normal pH level is 7.35, that's the lowest one, the highest one is 7.45, 7.45. Alkalinases mean higher than normal pH. Okay, so it's going to be higher than the highest uh, normal pH over here. So above 7.45, 7.45 is considered as alkalosis. It is also dangerous and the same like acidosis. How bicarbonate ions, sodium bicarbonate, in antacid, neutral acid in the stomach. So if you have uh, argon, sometimes you take the antacid. And antacid has this component, okay? Sodium bicarbonate. How this antacid remove acid? Remember acid? Uh, when we have a lot of acid, it means that we have a lot of hydrogen ions. This one has to be neutralized. It has to be removed. Look at this one. So this extra acid, uh, strong acid, will be combined with this sodium bicarbonate. Uh, and what is the result? Look at here. So. It will make this okay, it will create water and NaOH, which is this is actually base. Okay, so base, what is the indication of base? pH is higher. Okay, okay, higher, usually higher than seven point zero, like pH 9, 10, 12, that's considered as base, okay? Increase the pH. So the sodium bicarbonate will bind the hydroxide. No, it's not hydroxide. Hydroxide ion is OH, which is not, okay? OH min minus uh, or negative. Hydroxide, this is this one. So this one is not correct. Bind to hydrogen ion. Yes, this is hydrogen ion. This is hydrogen ion. But which one? Bind the hydrogen ion and raising the pH. The pH become higher. Yes, eh? it's become base. Okay, from acid eh? into base. So this should be the answer. So D is incorrect because this decreasing is mean that become more acidic. Uh, which is incorrect. We have to remove the acid, make it base. So C should be the correct answer. What is the function of diuretic drug? Diuretics, again, increase urination. Uh, like coffee uh, is example of diuretics uh, substance. Increase the urination uh, inhibit urine products uh, is not promote yes so it's, that should be the answer okay? increase urination so there are some medicine that can be used to increase urination it's called the diuretic drugs which of the following can cause dehydration okay dehydration uh, which is water in our body is gone. Eh? So excessive water intake, it is not because water intake will cause hydration. Eh? Our body become hydrated. So this is not, this is opposite. Excessive eating is not really causing the dehydration. Eh? Uh, prolonged vomiting and diarrhea. Yes, that should be the uh, cause of dehydration. If someone have diarrhea, sometimes they become dehydrated. And this is, most of the time, is really dangerous if they unable to stop this diarrhea. A lot of water will be lost from our body 
and our body become very, very dehydrated. It's become fatal. Why water balance and electrolytes balance are interdependent. Interdependent mean they are connected. Eh? It's always together. Why? A, B, C, or D. Because both form ions in the blood. No, eh? water is not really ions. So this is not. Because water is dissolved in electrolyte. No, water is not dissolved in electrolyte. Electrolyte dissolve in water eh? so this is incorrect eh? this one is incorrect because electrolytes are dissolved in water that's correct okay so they are interdependent because electrolyte ions will always dissolve in water you cannot really uh, separate them okay so they are interdependent What are the most important factors in influencing movement of fluid between compartments? Okay, what's the most important? Of course, the pressure will be the important factor. This is, we have uh, blood, okay, plasma over here. And then, uh, of course, we have a force from our heart beating, so pumping the blood, causing this force. So this force will cause the movement of substance from the blood into the ECF over here, okay? interstitial fluid, fluid between the cells. So there is, there is also osmotic pressure, uh, whether here and here, that causing the movement of fluid. So of course, the hydrostatic pressure and the osmotic pressure. A passive active transfer is not really the main factor, the most important factor for this movement of uh, substance between compartments. What is edema? A, B, C, or D. Okay, remember when the blood, the blood capillary, so this part is the arterial side this one is the phenol side okay the blood is flowing here so in the arterial side there will be more pressure okay inside the blood vessel so this one is blood vessel okay therefore the water and substances will be going into this tissue Okay, so cell, cell, and the fluid between the cell, the ECF. So in this area, water will be go to this. Let's say this part is, uh, let's say this is liver, okay? And then in this part, on the phenol part, then there will be reabsorption of molecules and also plasma, uh, water become plasma in the cell, okay? If there are more filtrations over here, what happened, there will be more water uh, in this area if the reabsorption is less. And what happened with this organ is become bigger okay, because of excess water. Okay, So this excess water in the organ is called the edema. Abnormal accumulation of extracellular fluid, which is coming from this water over here. Okay, so that's the answer of this question. Okay, I think that's all. Okay, good luck with your uh, exam number four. Goodbye.